Hello, and welcome to the pilot of Retake the Week, a show with myself and a fellow member of the CS Degeneracy that watches pretty much everything and anything available. Uh, that is Quacker. You may recognize him from uh, Prospects Joel, which I think we might want to pigeonhole for a little while. Just store that away. I have, I have, no, I have no memory of that <laughs> video ever being made. Yeah, it must have been someone else. But also notoriously from the Bird from Sky is on my radar video. That was... I mean, that was an interesting little uh, little video. He's talking about a pretty interesting IGL with a unique style, but also one of the another treating controversy. I see we're somewhat drawn to these, like moths to flame. Like we love potential cheaters. If for some reason, it's just how it ends up being. But anyway, for us, it's a good Sunday morning. Enter playing phase. Waka, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, it's been a stressful morning trying to. Uh... W wake up in time and do all of these things uh and yeah now we're here uh phase and ends are playing i you were hoping for the format to be for the event to be over uh but pretty much recording. yeah i was yeah. hoping that they just do you know like a regular event have a grand final on yep. sunday not both semis and the grand final whose idea was this yeah we didn't need this but, we could play coming, games on friday it, yeah yeah but but it's coming out after the event is finished of course then yeah yeah, so we're gonna probably throw out a couple predictions because I think I think yeah, it's okay, gonna uh, take this. Con congratulations to Mouse slash Face slash Ends then for winning the event. Oh, okay. I see we're uh, hedging our bets today, <laughs> 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 betting on black and red and green. Screw it, why not? Yeah, <laughs> it's technically yeah. legal. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what the what goes down in that event. Pretty big return to form, I think, for these guys. So it's been a bit of a dead month. There's not been like the last thirty days. Not been very many big events. Not been a lot to preview, so it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top and who maintains their form. But first, let's start with our real topic, what we want to start with, and that's Liquid pretty much definitely signing Skulls. I think first we should talk about Skulls as a player. Uh, he was on pain for a while. Quick, what are your feelings? How do you see him fitting into a squad? Um, I I like Skulls. Uh, I think he's played, a, he's played a very good game on pain. I, I, I when he sort of broke out on pain, I was a bit surprised because I remember when he was on team one and he was a dog. Uh, there's no other way to put it. He was the worst player on team one and he got cut from the team uh, in a few months. And then he did some stuff in like the lower teams and then he came back to pain and he was absolutely nuts, uh, particularly during the major, I think. Hmm. Uh, I remember, uh, I, I forget who was coaching or who is coaching pain. Um, but I remember they did an interview ahead of the, I think it was Stockholm, where they had like, oh, miraculously qualified through the America's qualifier. And then it was like, oh, it's fun to see them at the major. And he was like, if we don't make top eight, I'll be disappointed. And I was like, <laughs> what is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's quite a high bar. Um, no, but I like Skulls. I like Skulls as a player. I think, um, I think he will fit into Liquid in, uh, in, in the way, in the way. You know, he is as a player. It's a, it's a cool lineup. Yeah, I went over this move in an episode of the Maui Snake Show with, well, if you can't figure out who that show's with, kill yourself, I mean, in a video Similar. game. Similar. <laughs> 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 but no, we, uh, we discussed the playstyle, and I think I've got the same problem I had with the Rain Waker edition, where I just don't see how you put him and Naf on the same team and just make sense. I mean, we, we heard the promise, the talk prior to the Rain Waker signing of, oh, Naf's fine, he can play pack roles, he can do all this other stuff. Well, he fucking didn't, and the team didn't work out. And then Rain Waker got cut, and now we're doing the same thing again. Like, Skulls is a more, I think, explosive fragger. He's got, like, better first bullet aim. Headshot percentage shows that, but also the demos, you'll see very quickly. He's more flicky, bursty. Looks more like a young aimer, because Rain Waker plays a lot like an old man, you know? He's shift-walking around, finding the right angles, the right timings, but overall not really blowing your mind with its shots, for the most part. Yeah, Skulls would be, a, I guess, a bit of an upgrade in that sense. I think you can figure out a lot more things on the fly with a player like that. But it mm. does have the same concerns as before. Speaking of, we now kind of have, it's a semi-confirmed, as in loosely confirmed, new roster for Liquid. Just smashing together all the rumours. Now we're just going to discuss this quickly. So we've got Cadian, Naf, Twists, Skulls, and for some reason I'm drawing a blank. This is why you look at Yikindar. your notes. Yikindar, of course. He's always the one that I forget. It's just He's now a fixture of the team, but with all the moves, I keep yeah. expecting him to move. And so this is kind of a screw you to some comments I got when I was talking about Cadian's options, when I said Liquid should go back to an America's RMR team. 
And for some reason, that well, they... was a bit of a controversial statement, but they clearly agreed with me, because there is no point trying to slog your way through EU anymore. Like, why would you bother if you've got the option to go back? It is... Honestly, I like this Liquid lineup more than I've liked a lot of the previous ones. Um, I think they they really have gone all in on players that are just, you know... Um, I mean, Kady and Twists are big name players. They kept Yakinda and Naf. Like, they're not dilly-dallying around with like, oh, we're going to keep OC. OC is a prodigy for the future. Or like, uh, looking at all of these things. Um, yeah. and, and also signings like Rain Waker and Patsy. Like, I was down for it. I, I like the idea, but the experiment. Yeah. It's yeah, it is an experiment, and they still sort of have done that because Skulls is still an experiment. I think um, it's you know, but you know, mostly they've gone for it. We need an established IGL. We'll get Kadian in there instead of experimenting with the Kindar. We need you know someone we can rely on as like a player. Twists is available. We'll put him in there, mm-hmm. and you know they they've actually gone for something that, um, at least on paper, really looks like it would work. Uh, if you ask me. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, because I think if you look at the balance of this team, <clears throat> we're either going to have to see Skulls play as like a pack rifler, Nath play as a pack rifler, yep. Yakinda give up a lot of like extremity play to be a tradi- more traditional entry player. Because I don't want Twists, for the most part, taking you know first contacts. He's a great trader, he's a great player off the shoulder, but I've, I don't like him as the first man in a lot of the time. And with Kadian being an AWPer, we're not going to have the classic sacrificial IGL in this team. Mm. So I'm really curious to see how that ends up balancing out. Who ends up getting that priority? Like, or really that responsibility? Take a back seat in terms of perhaps their numbers and the types of fights they want to take and be more of a team player. Likely it's going to end up being Skulls, I think. Just out of the pecking order. When you do sign big names, there's no Patsy to throw at the front. You know, Patsy could not be a Patsy on this team. Cut. Yep. So you're going to have to find someone else to be that Patsy. So interesting to see how that works out. Overall, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head, though. They've gone with established names who know what they're doing and play, already known for playing their roles in Tier 1. <clears throat> so 100%. Yeah. And, it, it, and the established names also aren't like fallen people who are way past their prime. <laughs> yeah. You've signed. Yeah. yeah. Not established in 2016, established now. Like, yeah. <laughs> not a, not a, a player who's looking to the horizon going, oh. All these millions of dollars I'm going to sleep on finally retire. Not yep. one of those players. A player who's still very much up for it. I think Kadian, pro- probably, this is going to be a pissed off Kadian. Like, he's been cut from his team by two players who, I'm assuming there was more of a team effort surrounding him getting cut, but it was to those two players who used their leverage and became the yep. face of that movement. And then just to leave the team, he's going to have a lot on his mind and a lot to be pissed off about. So I'm really hoping we see an amazing Kadian. I want to see 1v5s. I want to see him going for the crazy clutches, the BM knives, everything. Talk that shit. If they play each other in a <laughs> tournament, I want him out of his chair every bloody round. I don't care if it's an anti-eco. I want him out of his seat going, what? And what? Because <laughs> screw those guys. <laughs> He's deserved to vent a little bit, I think, in those games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But all right, that's, uh, that's an interesting team. Um... I'll be curious to see what happens, but another team that kind of is in the transfer market right now, who are far less certain of anything, they've just been rejected by Nico. The Falcons mm. roster, as it currently stands, officially confirmed, is Boros and four question marks. Now, the strongest rumor is Snappy will be joining him. That's the strongest rumor I've seen. You've brought up. The- oh, Magisk. Oh, yeah. Mega Story is confirmed. My bad. He's pretty much yeah. confirmed. He's not officially confirmed. Yeah, yeah. But he's pretty much yeah, confirmed. pretty much. And then after that, yeah, we've got Boros, Megas, Snappy, potentially. A lot of question marks. Nothing's really certain <laughs> yet. You did mention it just before we went live. Perhaps it's some pious joining him. So maybe elaborate on that a little bit. There, there's so many outsiders. Or <laughs> I say outsiders because I don't think they're insiders. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's so so many people right now who uh, during the spring season we had insiders making leaks all the time, and they ended up actually being sort of accurate. Um, so we had people like Harumi, mostly Harumi, honestly, uh, who was posting a lot, and um, you know, it kind of worked out. He was mostly correct. Um, what I've heard is that Harumi is really only an insider because he's friends with Overdrive. So where Overdrive will actually do a bit of due diligence. And, you know, double check his sources and make sure what he posts is actually mostly accurate. Harumi will just like, he hears something, post it, and then it's out. 
Um, I think, so at this point, and then there's also KRL, who has put his nose into all of this and turned out to be, you know, semi-accurate, just because, again, he knows Extas and he knows a bunch of French guys. Yeah, he's very well connected in the French um, scene, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he was also wrong. He said Nico was a done deal. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, well, so it's hard to know who to believe, uh, but I I know that there has been talk about... So Snappy going to Falcons has been talked about for a while. I know that recently, I think it was Harumi who said uh, uh, Ends would be losing Snappy, Senpaius, and Diha. Um, which is, you know, it's con- Diha, I think, is connected to Nine, who are kind of building a pretty nutty Polish lineup. Um, and I'm, I think people are just, you know, it's conjecture. conjecture. They connect <laughs> Senpaius with Snappy. To Falcons, because where else would he go? Like, who else is in the market for for an opera right now? So, um, yeah. I think that's basically where it comes from. It could be some Pice. Pice is a great, great, great player. He's set to be. Oh, I, I think I, I think it's a slam dunk. He's set to be a top ten player on the HLTV list uh, this year, just based on the stats he's had, based on the year he's had. Well, he's been um, great, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know. If N, like, I'm not sure what the case is if Ens can keep him. Like, maybe they're too small to keep him. Maybe it's just the money. Maybe he just really wants to keep going with Snappy. Um, whatever it is, he definitely could move. Yeah, it could be because 100% we've seen a different Sampias on Ens. It's not that on yeah. Movistar he was ever bad. He still had the same talent, abilities. He was still the same, you know, very good AWPA, solid hybrid, can rifle pretty well at times. He was still that guy on Movistar. He just wasn't as assertive, as confident, he didn't get the same sort of, I think, autonomy at times. He was not very often, you know, nade dump kind of guy, hoped to get something done in the post plant on the T side. And yeah, CT side is where we saw the magic come out a little bit, but definitely a far more released and open type of player is some pious on ends. So it might just be a confidence thing with, with, uh, with Snappy as his leader. But I also think, honestly, some pious, if we do end up in a hybrid meta, he could be the best of the bunch. In terms of AWPers, you think mm. there's the guys who are always going to be crazy. So Zaiwu Manasi, simple if he ever decides to come and play. The next guy at this rate is some pious. I mean, Shiro, who knows where he's going to go? Who knows where he's going to be? Who knows how he's feeling right now? He didn't look that brilliant for a little period there towards the end. He had good maps. But all in all, it wasn't actually that great of a Shiro sort of era. Some pious, though, especially if you have to do more heavy lifting on rifles, is going to be snug fit right into the CS2. So really excited to see if that happens. If that does come through, if we end up with like, yeah, Snappy, Magus, Boros, Sampias, plus one, there's a little more to be excited about. Because one of the things I was worried about when I was looking at all these potential Falcons moves, even with like Nico potentially joining, or Nico and Monacy, with Snappy, Magus, I was like, but hold on, how does this gel? We have no core coming through. We have overlapping roles for days. What is the idea here? Well, now if you're telling me that Snappy's bringing players with him, I mean, imagine if that and one is Madden, but potentially, or someone else from this actual Ents core. Also, we've got a real team to talk about. We've got an actual roster that has continuity, elite fragging, and some veterans to slot in. Some great minds. Yep. That's a dangerous roster. So really excited to see what comes of Falcons. If this rumor actually ends up being true, if it ends up being a mishmash of five players from five teams, I'm, I'm sold. I'm, I'm selling out. All my stock gone. Yeah, just move on from that roster entirely. Yeah, I, I'm really curious about why Snappy, and maybe and maybe Sunpias would opt to move to move from Ens, because they're a great. They're a great org. They've done great. They are, you know, a good team. Um, obviously Snappy's contract is coming up as dollar, is Dihas, as is. Yeah, Just, no, it's. I mean, you say that, it's you paper, say that, man. and it's obviously... paper. They're not making a big salary. Yeah. Ents, come on, like let's be real. Ents is not. A, Ents is a grassroots org who sign good talent and make the right moves. They're not going to be paying elite salaries. Falcons have yeah. all the dosh. So if you're talking, when I talked to, when I saw the rumors, where it was just Snappy was rumored. I thought, yep. hell yeah, go get that back. You're 31, 32 maybe at this point. You still got game in you. Is he thirty three? I'm pretty sure he's 33. He's I mean, the... He looks a day over 21, the poor guy. Yeah, he's, he's 33. Yeah. 
he's still got some counter strike to play he's still got a great mind for the game he's not been making like buku bucks go make him for a few years i mean he's still got chances to win events if they sign good players he's still a great igl plus he gets to make some paper so i thought that was cool now we're talking it's more of a project that's going to have potential even better still going to get all that cash even better chance to go win stuff but yeah i definitely definitely think it's money i i can't see any other reason than money yep um yeah i guess it's um i i don't think the team will be a contender uh like no. early on for like championships okay uh it shouldn't be like with nico perhaps but you know Especially depending on who the fifth would be in this scenario, where we get some pious and snappy, it's like I think it looks more to me like, and it, it makes more sense if they want to like build a solid team that can later attract the top prospects. Um, shout out to Kain for giving me this idea in another discussion. Uh, it's or you know I'm stealing it. Uh, he, if you look at like how Phase built their super team in 2018, it was like pretty like. They got mid-level players and just slowly started iterating over that. And eventually, you know, they could attract names like Nico and uh, Guardian and Olaf Meister. But like Kerrigan started with quite a mid-level team and then successively just replaced players with better and better ones. Yeah, he um, started with, was it Rain, AZ, Alukio? Uh... Uh, yes, yes, I think that would have been it. And there's, uh, there's clearly yeah, there's pieces there you'd want to go play with, namely Kerrigan. But obviously, Rain was very skilled at the time, considered one of the best pistol yeah. players, one of the best players in the world. You had, I think, Easy quickly had to be replaced, but like Keo and uh, Alu were both players for a role who could definitely fit in, definitely be a part of a good team. They just yeah. obviously had to be upgraded. When you're looking at players like Guardian, you had to go make the players. Yeah. So it's an interesting idea, definitely. This is but, but, it's also, idea. but it's also like the players aren't bad. Like none of these guys were bad enough where you. They were still good enough to put phase at a level where where you know right. players would look at them and say, actually, you know, this is decent. I could join this team and, and make um, it we could actually win something. Yeah, like they were still doing enough to stay relevant, like in that mid layer between you know bad and good. Um, sure. So you could see there's a foundation here that like if I join and plug in instead of Jacob, as it were, with Nico. Um, if I if I join and uh, replace Jacob. This team will become very good, and you know he was right. He was right. So, <clears throat> and then you know this thing happens again. Magisk is exactly that kind of player. I think he's done pretty much everything. He's great, obviously, but he's not the player that's going to carry this team, and he never mm. really will be. But he is the kind of player, like Yushima, perhaps might have been for Phase or Alu, someone who is you know established. They've done a lot. They don't really have the peaks to. Um, really hard carry the team but they are there to build a foundation you know it's something that snuffy can work with and eventually come one day when magisk is a bit older and a bit worse um and falcons are a legitimate maybe top 15 top 10 team uh that mm -hmm. could make someone like well who knows maybe zai Wu, for all we know let's just say that yeah, zai Wu sure. might say honestly vitality are down on their luck i might just go join falcons and actually win majors again with uh zonic and robo like you know, it's <clears throat> it's like about building a <clears throat> about building a foundation, and right. uh, yeah, the balancing out then becomes when it... how long do you have with Snappy? We are oh, starting, uh... you're starting pretty late, so maybe that'll <clears throat> last be an upgrade you'll make is is find someone else there. But I think we're we're getting far too far into the future. I think with with these yeah. sorts of uh, these conversations because there's so much less to be confirmed. They definitely want to field their roster by the first major. They said on HLTV confirmed that. Not sure what he was the owner or gm he was talking about how that first major uh, was the yeah. one they were really interested in being maybe sure in his mind winners but considering you're building from scratch that's a bit dreamy but at least being a top eight sort of team a roster that actually shows potential and competes so i'm sure they're gonna have to announce something in the coming weeks because otherwise that, what the hell are we doing like this this is uh getting a bit late to start just building from scratch so interested to see what happens there i think we should uh we should move on to a Sort of mm. topic, there's going to be a recurring theme throughout these videos. This being the pilot of this show, we're going to be talking about Prospect of the Week. Like Throughout this week, there's been a lot of games that perhaps not everyone's got to watch. And I'm going to talk about personally players who have either been on Prospect shows in the past, which is quite a few. Some, A lot of whom are still trawling through Tier 2, trying to get that shot up in the, uh, in the next level. And I'm hoping, Quacker being my Swedish expert, to focus on that sort of side of the world. 
not necessarily always <clears> Swedes, <throat> Scandinavians, whatever comes to mind. Of course, you're allowed to take a deep shot every now and then, just throw out a Mongolian player if you want. Go crazy. <laughs> I'll start with my player, and it's Matisse. He was on Prospects Multi, uh, episode two. So, basically, this guy puts up Donk-level numbers in Tier 2. Because Donk in Tier 2 looks like he's smurfing, he looks like the best rifle we've ever seen. Whilst Matisse maybe doesn't aesthetically look that pleasing, he puts up the same numbers. He gets those sorts of frags. He's put up, I think this week, a 0.8-something kills per round, 1.3 rating, 1.5 impact. He's opening, closing, he's lurking in the mid-round. He's doing anything that, Matisse, uh, that Sam P need from him. And he's actually this week just smashed it out of the park. I think they've won most, if not all, their series. He's been top fragging pretty much every time. Yeah, it feels good to see him do that sort of thing, but it's frustrating because I know he's either not going to get the chance to step up, or if he will, he'll get the neofrag treatment, which is shoved into uncomfortable roles on a team that doesn't really much make much sense for him, and he's going to look like a, well, like a flop. So, honestly, I'm just hoping for the best that he takes a gradual step up into a team that actually uses him the way he should be. And in the meantime, keep putting up weeks like this, because this has been bananas. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, did you get a chance to catch any of the Sampi games, or were they not playing enough Swedes this week? <laughs> I, I didn't catch a lot of them. Uh, I am aware that they will be playing LAN in Brno soon, since they won their group stage in the tip sport thing. Yes. Uh, I... Uh, I actually believe our, our mutual acquaintance, Imrik, uh, would have seen them play in one of these earlier Czech lands, actually. Um, did you, did you? Yep. Uh, no, I, I, they've sort of flown under my radar. Sampi isn't really a team that, you know, you see them in the HLTV match list and you go, oh, I really want to watch some Sampi right now. Um, I I... <laughs> 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 just uh, for name value, like I, I'm aware of Matis. I've seen him in the stat yeah. sheets. I just never catch his games because, you know, it, the team name is just invisible to me. Uh, they're playing right now. Sure. Uh, <laughs> versus yeah, Mouse and um, no, I haven't ca I caught a lot of his games. I've mostly seen his stats. They are very good. I know, I think it was either last winter even, or this summer. It was someone, like if, if it was Sampi's coach or someone in the Czech scene who uh, tweeted and said, oh, why is nobody looking at Ma Matis? Why is nobody looking at Matis? And then someone, you know, with actual know-how say, said uh, they were, but, you know, nothing came of it. So, yeah, actual good, actual good teams are looking at Matis. He is a genuine prospect, so to speak. Uh, yeah, it should be. But yeah. Definitely should be. And yeah, hopefully we can see something more from him. Not in terms of the series play, but more in terms of the roster he's on. Because Sampi are mm. cool, but they are 81st in the world for a reason. Um, there's not an abundance of like talent and structure on that team. They're very fun to watch. Great appearances at Czech lands and Czechoslovakian lands. But it's not really what we want. Let's move on to your pick. You've picked someone, obviously, straight out of Sweden. You know, but... but uh, <laughs> uh... <laughs> I think there's a pretty obvious pick this week as to who stood out from the Swedes. Yes, it's Maxter, obviously. Uh, Max Jansson, Maxter. He uh, kind of was left out of NIP, um, in a sense, or like out of the young ninjas players who uh, their team folded in, at the uh, uh, in the summer. Um, we had. Uh, whoever was on that team, I forget. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, but but Nilo, Adam B, Era, um, and I think it was no, it would have been LNZ, the final one in this lineup. Uh, they all okay. moved on to better teams. Um, Godsend obviously picked up Era, LNZ went to Sangal, and Nilo and Adam B formed Metisport, which is probably my favorite Swedish team at the moment. Um, yeah, they're interesting. Yeah, but Maxter, legitimately a decent player on that lineup, was just left out, stayed on the NIP bench um, and come this big shuffle where NIP have totally rebuilt their team around uh, seemingly around Rez, Headtrick and Config uh, there was a delay in being able to pick up an IGL so uh, Max had to step in with S-Tag as an interim IGL in case you've missed it they've most recently finished the uh, CS Asia Championships uh, going out in the quarterfinal uh, legitimately not a great result uh, for NIP, let's face it, um, having only beaten win Wings Up, but they they did come very close to beating Phase in the opening BO1. Yeah, uh, Max re Max just really stood out. He's played three events with NIP so far. Uh, the CAC was his final one. Um, team didn't do great. 
at all. But in terms of Maxter individually, he's really shown something. Uh, yeah. He's one, 1. 1.12 in the Rubit Cup and 1.15 average in the CAC. Um, Thunder Peak was a bit worse, but it comes out to an overall average in these 19 maps of 1.08, which is actually matching config in terms of pure rating, which is quite... Um, solid for a stand-in, especially with a step It's very solid for a Yeah. Yeah. Before this, I would have never said Maxter was tier 1 ready. I would say he's far too inexperienced. He's only played for Young Ninjas and some orgless stuff with Lecro, where they just yeah. like won some cups and stuff. Um, supposedly, he did have offer offers um, right before the stand instant, but he rejected them because he he wanted to play with NIP and do the stand instant because he thought it was better for him. He thought it was better to help the team. So he, um, legitimately a great player who I think is definitely going to be picked up soon, uh, by someone. I don't know when his contract is up. I would almost assume that his contract is going to be up this uh New Year's. Just guessing. Um, we'll guess but whatever, someone. Mind, but yeah. Yeah, so, uh, someone is going to pick him up soon. I I really hope he's 19 years old. He's doing this stuff. It's uh, you know, it, it's a no brainer to me. I don't know if you've been able to catch any of his games. Well, the uh, thing is, I've prospects multiple multi one one that mm. featured Nilo. Now, Nilo at the time was the one I thought was the guy to watch in Young Ninja. And basically, when I was scouting Young Ninjas to see who the hell I was going to take a look at, the numbers gave me a pretty clear impression. I was like, Nilo cracked out of his mind. I watched him play. Yeah, he looked really good. Like, really solid, fundamentally sound. Made very few silly mistakes for a player of his age. And I thought, yeah, great, cool. But Max, the, the stat sheet didn't bounce, like, like pop out at me. And then I watch him on, on ninjas in pajamas standing in, and I'm like, yo, this guy's actually really good. So, like, can you provide any insight into why things look so different with young ninjas? Why, well, at least from a very far back, like, broad perspective, like, just looking overall, it didn't seem like he was the guy to zone in on. Pretty narrow down, but um, clearly has something to it. Well, this, this is going to sound like copium, but I think right now the NIP lineup that played CAC and a couple of other lineups is actually kind of very well-rounded in a way. Um, it's, you know, previous NIP lineups, they were star-studded. They had players who should be or could be dropping 1.15 ratings constantly, but um, obviously, you, you can have too much of a good thing. Uh, Hampus spoke about in his interview with Dust2 that uh, there were vehement role clashes. Everybody wants to play the exact same position. And obviously, that means some people are going to be un uncomfortable. And the, the that affects the entire team. Uh, coming into this NIP lineup, Maxter was exactly the kind of role player that they needed. They needed someone who is a bit more passive, a bit more happy-taking um, anchor position. So a bit similar to S-Tag, I believe. Um, which frees up rest and config to really do what they do. And when the entire team is performing to a really good level, that sort of elevates all the players on the team, uh, except for S-Tag, apparently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, but they, uh, I think legitimately, he was playing his preferred positions on Young Ninjas as well. I think he was doing all right, but the um, this team is playing a bit without pressure. They know they have a new IGL coming in. Well, he's in now, but he hasn't played yet. Um, yeah. Obviously, they've been preparing around him. Threat said they have built the entire team around him, and I think that was reflected in CAC as well. Um, I think it's a combination of playing without pressure. I think it's a combination of playing like this is my big shot, and like you know, he was gone either way. There was no anxiety over like how am I going to do. Um, he's just going to come in there, play his game, do his best, and he did. Uh, I know he was still disappointed on Twitter uh, about going out in CAC so early. Oh well, yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. But no, the It'll be interesting to see where he ends up landing. Yeah. What is the is the confirmed NIP roster then going to be Alex, Esetag, and then the big hitters? Yes, Res, Hedrick, Config, Esetag, and Alex. That's confirmed, and it's going to be playing the Blastfall final in 10 days. A uh, bit of a group of death they have with FaZe, Cloud9, and Navi. Actually, no, wait, Navi and Cloud9 kind of suck, so... Yeah, uh, I was going to say, it's, it's, <laughs> it's in, on paper, the, the, big, the big names, scary, but... Yeah. Basically, not that bad. So no, I do, I do agree with one thing. This this team build is is a little better. Let's put it that way, Just a little better. Because before, it was nice having guys like Brolan on the roster, and everyone loves well the idea of Brolan. But for the longest time, he hasn't been that guy. To be fair, you could say same about same thing about Rez. Love the idea of Rez. 
put him on the server though for a lot of events he's not been that guy so maybe cutting down on the luxuries to sort of highlight the ones you do have is great i've always been a huge fan of comping and it's been disappointing to see him just a flounder at times in this roster i really wish he was able to you know handle a few beers and not get kicked out of astralis because i think that have been that was the match. That was the fit. That was the team I wanted to see was him on Astralis with Device, with Blame F. That would have been crazy. But instead, yep. we're here. And maybe this is the chance to, to get back some prime config, you know. Maybe roll up our sleeves, get some good work done. Yeah. The problem is, I feel like you, in a team, you need to have a balance between someone who's willing to be a bit more passive, take a step back, take the worst positions. And you need to have someone who's a bit more aggressive, who takes good positions and can really frag out. Um, you need a balance in this, and I feel like a lot of teams recently have really developed in the opposite direction, where they sign big name players and they build a very, I like to say, top heavy team, where they just sure. like, oh well, Dupree. I'm not saying Vitality are a victim of this exactly, but uh, they go like, oh, Dupree is underperforming. We should replace him with Flames, which you know, in theory, you know, it might work. It's an it's a firepower upgrade, but you have to consider the roles and how the overall team dynamic is going to be affected by, especially with regard to that balance. I know Hampus said the same thing. Uh, Hampus, Res, Brolin, and Config all wanted to be the aggressive star player. So two players need to get shafted in that um, in that regard. Yeah, 100%. I think, yeah, yeah I, I think especially on CT side, Brolin was shafted for his entire time in NIP. He was playing small site anchor roles, which just feels so weird to me. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm happy that you know, Threat spoke about it. There, there were two issues that he spoke about on the NIP lineup when he came in as general manager. There was a lack of leadership, which, you know, Hampus has spoken before about, like, he he he, he maybe doesn't di didn't always want to be the IGL. Um, maybe he just doesn't have the personality traits you need to be a good leader. Um, and also, um, he spoke about later in his interview with us too, where there were Voices, voices in the team who wouldn't really respect his voice. There was like, you know, he wasn't really respected as the leader in the team. So you hopefully solve that with Alex, who I think, you know, has shown a lot about being a great leader. I mean, movie star writers, they are a team who pretty much thrive off their, what we know, the aspects of building a team that we normally group under the umbrella term chemistry. And a large part yeah. of that would be um, Alex is doing, most likely. So in theory, you've solved that issue. Roll clashes, you have Alex and Estag who are happy taking a backseat for Config and Rest to be the star players of this team. Um, yep. So it's it's nice to see that there is at least a thought behind it. And then, of course, you know, it's not players whose names I would expect to win Copenhagen. Um, but it's a starting point. It's, it's not definitely impossible. a starting point. It's not impossible. Yeah. I mean, and it's again ultra talented. Config is a beast. There's, 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 there's the pieces are there. It's just. It needs to come yeah. together quite quickly. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. I don't know. If anything else, it's a starting point. It's definitely a starting point. And again, it's this thing where you can iteratively uh, yeah. replace players one by one as you improve. This is what I've wanted NIP to do for years, honestly. We've had so many roster changes, like just rapid fire over and over and over again. Uh, I really just wanted them to like build something that makes sense on paper, see how it goes, and then you can you know pick and choose later on as opportunities present themselves. Maybe S attack ends up not being the player you want. Well, maybe Isaac becomes available and you can put him there. Maybe he does better. Um, you know, there's there's various different players you could go for. Um, so yeah, yeah, much better philosophy. Hopefully, Alex can bring some of that magic he had in Movistar because honestly, when that team worked. It was system based. It there was yeah. there was no part in that roster aside from at his best some pious that made sense for them making playoffs of big events like they did. So yeah. that was full credit to Alex. Hopefully, he can bring some of that magic into this team. A new flavor yeah. of uh, Nip Magic. The uh, this, Spanish this segment was supposed. Yeah, this segment was supposed to be prospect of the week. So uh, to bring tie this all back, maybe Maxter is the player who comes in in the end. Potentially, and, uh, potentially. if yeah. they decide S Tags is is just you know. Not the fragger he needs to be. Even if he is playing more passive, less impactful roles, you still need a guy who's going to click heads. And if he's not going to be able to do it, why not? Why not risk Maxter coming up? So let's wrap up. Yep, prospect of the week. Loving the Maxter performances. Let's talk about because we're still waiting for Ents phase to finish. Let's delay our CS Asia Championships talk. And let's talk about a bit of a weird event. 
a very online event. That's what I said. We're the two kind of degens who are going to watch every bloody game of Counter Strike. I watched the majority of this event, CCT Central Europe Series 8. Of course, comedically named because there is no limit to who can play in this, even though it's called the Central Europe Series. You can play in every yep. Europe Series, no matter where in Europe you're from. They just name them in some arbitrary geography, like style i don't know why they did this but uh, i think i think there is a thought behind it where the invited teams can be basically fucking anyone but they make sure that the qualifiers actually correspond to these areas so there is a thought behind it where like there is a bolt an eastern more eastern europe teams have opportunities to qualify for these events uh, okay which is a bit weird. I would have thought it would have been the opposite, where the invitees were the ones from the regions yeah. that you want, and then anyone else could qualify, but they've sort of done it the opposite way. Uh, either way, it's a, it's a naming scheme that's left me rather wound up in the past looking for the right bloody demo, because a team has <laughs> played in all three different CCT series for different parts of Europe against the same opposition, and I'm like, where is this game? So <laughs> this event's actually thankfully finished. It finished in the middle of the week at some point, uh, classic Wednesday Grand Final, as we're all used to, and with Bet Boom taking it home, and man, this Bet Boom roster, sure, this is an online cup, so I don't think it lends too much credence to the idea that Nafani deserves a big fucking apology, but the, the ideas are starting to build up. I mean, after their performance at their debut LAN, and then now this cup just casually breezed to, there were some issues to talk about that I will get into, but as a start, I mean, Quacker. Anthony's got himself a team. They play well together. How much credit are we going to start having to give him? Uh, quite a bit, I think. I think this team is... Um, you know, it's... It's it's a bit underground, so to speak. None of these... Like, Nafani is the only one who has real Tier 1 experience. But still... Still, even when you look at these names, you can say that all of these players are legitimately great players. Um... Maybe Danists would be my question mark, just because he's sort of been, you know, he's sort of the uh, tier two pickup. Yeah, that the, they made. the conversation that I had with uh, Yumi on the double swing, my other primary podcast on this channel, was who the fuck is Danists? Like, we know everyone else. Who the fuck is Danists? Yeah. So yeah, he is the question mark. You're right. Yeah, uh, I think it's a legitimately great, legitimate great team. Uh, Nafani has obviously played a big part in building it, and... Um, I think I can't really put a finger on like what is different in Betboom that wasn't present in Cloud9 that is enabling this for Nafani. Uh obviously he's playing at a lower mm. at a lower level. Um they did great in that one LAN. Which I'm forgetting it was Sydney. It was yeah. Sydney. Uh I, I confuse Sydney and Dallas for some reason all the time. Uh, but uh, they, they're they both arbitrarily just given to random places that aren't Europe. Just like, oh hey, have an event, have an event. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how it feels sometimes. Yeah. Uh team is legitimately great. I really like the balance. I really like um Chiron and Zorti being there. Zorti really replicating his force of form, I think, is absolutely great. Um because I had some doubts. I thought maybe Zorti just couldn't do it without Jerry. Obviously he can. Um Siren, obviously also doing very great alongside Chiron. Siren sort of going a bit like a bit under the radar when he was on Spirit, I feel like. I think, um, yeah, but deservedly so. I do think he was, yeah, he was yeah, under the radar he, because he, he just wasn't making much noise at Spirit Ross. Yeah, um, he still so, showed flashes of like this is a legitimate great player to watch, um, and I think he's really material. That's really materializing. If we're gonna give Nav uh, Nafani credit, he obviously deserves credit for building this great team, but it's a bit early to say Cloud Nine made a mistake by removing Nafani. Right, okay, that's, I think, the crux of the issue. We're not yet yep. going, ah, should have kept him. Even though Cloud9 has shut the bed since. Um, that's, I think more most of what has become the outrage, the conversation, isn't that Nathanie's gone and started literally a great team. It's a, it's a cool team to talk about so far, but it's mostly about the chaos at Cloud9, with Shiro stepping down, the IGL changes, the roster playing what looks like the same CS in a lot of cases, that they did before. It lends credence to the theory that, again, came up on the double swing quite a few times, was, is this Groove's fault? Is, is it not Nafani? Is it, this is a Groove, like, allowed system where there's three guys who are able to be vocal, the IGL's not actually running that much stuff out of spawn, it's super mid-roundy, contact-heavy. 
it does seem to be slowly coming to, to be, like this reality of Groove might be an issue on this roster. I'm not sure Groove exactly. There's obviously also management. Um, Cloud9 management may be not the best thing in the history of Counter-Strike um, with previous decisions, but I think I, I think they sort of faced a dilemma when they had to remove Nafani, um, which <laughs> I think it was all but confirmed recently in one way or another. I think it was uh, when Overdrive was on HLTV confirmed. And Overdrive, I mostly trust. Uh, having scrolled through his Twitter, basically everything he says I realizing, which is nice uh, to have someone to rely on. Yeah. Um, I think he he was the one, I think, who confirmed that uh, Ele- Nafani being removed was a prerequisite for Electronic joining the team. Like, Electronic was like, I will not join the team unless Nafani is gone. Which also carries the thing with, I think it was also said that Electronic and Perfecto were always going to move together. And, you know, they would not okay. split up. Like, if, Ele- if Electronic doesn't go, Perfecto doesn't go. So, Cloud9, we're looking at, all right, we have Buster and Nafani, or we have Electronic and Perfecto, and there's no way to combine them in a way that, you know, um, works out a bit better. So, they sort of had to cut Nafani in that case, if they wanted Electronic, which you do. You really want Electronic on your team. You do, but the issue has now become, do you want him on your team as an IGL? Did he yes, and I, deserve I think that? the answer is no. I think the answer is no. Hobbit very much underperformed once Electronic came in, which is not a coincidence. He had to move to a lot worse positions. He effectively became the new buster when this happened. Um, which is something that could and should have been foreseen, probably, if you were inside the team and thought, well, we're going to have to move Hobbit, but well, he's going to have the same rating anyways. No, of course not. He's going he's gonna to be worse. Um, and at that point, I start to wonder... If you you could have seen that, why not just keep Buster and cut Nafani and Hobbit? And maybe you would have had a more well-rounded team. Or maybe you could have gone out and got Boomage immediately, like right at that point, since you were getting him either way. And then you don't have Electronic as the IGL, you have Boomage as the IGL. Uh, which also just seems like maybe it's not even happening. I don't even know who's the caller right now. I, I remember Should be there was this clip from it. There was this clip from uh, HLTV confirmed. I saw it on Twitter the other the other day, where Striker had asked Cloud Nine at one of these events, "Who is the IGL right now?" And they said, "No comment." And then someone else had I can't remember. I think it was Nero who had asked, uh, who had asked Perfecto, who is actually calling for the team, and he said, "Well, Hobbit is doing still doing a lot of the calls." So like, who is calling this team? No. Who's idea man. as well? I haven't even checked that uh, at all. I'm sure you that's, can find the stats. That's that's the weird part. Have they played with Boomage? They have five maps. Oh, um, right, great. Yeah, it's just five maps. But you know, I'll, I'll I'll quickly pull up the stats to see if I can find who is actually opping. Because that will be the real question. Oh, it might legitimately be Boomage. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm looking at those five maps as well. His orb, he's got eleven kills with the orb. Eleven. Let's put it. Not the B. Ah, uh, yeah, all. true. I don't know who the hell else it'd be though. I don't think any of these guys should be orping really. Axel, he's not. just talented. No, I think that's the most orb um, kills anyone has. In these five maps, maybe it's the maybe it's the like rest thing. Like, oh, he has the mechanics for it, so he can do it. <laughs> well, Boomage has the mechanics for it. No, I'm an axe. Either way, this team has kind of lost the plot. Uh, let's. I want to go back to these bet boom guys quickly though, because basically just summarize this event run. Chiron probably ends up with the MVP if you look across the entire run through this this tournament. But it must be said, they they put it on absolutely. Amazing team effort. Like, everyone stepped up. I think the grand final was, like, won and lost by Nathany. Like, he was really impactful. It does make you a little worried that they're going to become a Nathany-heavy team where he's going to have to take loads and loads and loads and loads of duels. But the, thankfully, the saving grace of that is that actually have Chiron on the roster. That's what he's been doing forever, is taking loads and loads and loads of duels. And hopefully... Yeah see a, a more balanced approach in that sense we'll see when Nathany feels himself when he feels a call he'll be able to insert himself into the leading role 
And for the most part, it's going to be Chiron led, Zorte orping, and then like a sort of clutch sweep up sort of duo of uh, Danis and Siren. It's going to be interesting, seeing as Danis is the support player, but Siren's are really solid. I think one of the things I always said in Spirit is that he's not the most mechanically flashy player, and I never would use the word talented, but he plays the game plan to perfection, and he's generally quite aware of what the situation he's in is. Like He's looking in the right places, yep. he's doing what you want him to do, especially from the IGL's perspective, and so that's, if the system's good, he can really find his numbers, and he has so far, so clearly, good job, Nathany. In tier two, you've got yourself one hell of a team. And even at that tier one line you attended, you put up quite a good show. So lots to like, lots to talk about. Let's close this out with mm. this CS Asia Championships conversation because we have one semi final already finished uh, from bloody hell, like 3 a.m. or some crap. And that was Astralis yeah. Mouse. Mouse taking it in three with huge performances from Frozen and Yimfa, which I'm loving that. And device, and device, to be fair. Yeah, on the losing effort, device did yeah. give us quite a show. He, he usually does, to be fair. He's been, since he's come back in yeah. CS, he's been giving us really good numbers and actually looked like one of the best orps in the world again, so credit to him. But I must say, Yimfat, it looked like a slam dunk signing. Like, he was cracked in the lower divisions on that Mouse XT roster, but also any time he was on a server. His initial few tournaments, yeah, he's playing supportive, lurking, uh, lurking, not in the same way he was on Mouse and XT, but more of just a occasional extremity player. For the most part, he wasn't getting his spots, wasn't getting his roles, but he was finding decent numbers. And now he's stepped it up and up and up. And I feel like he's getting more and more priority on the team to go and make plays and make things happen. And he's, well, he's amazing. Honestly, he's amazing. I put him in Prospects Multi 1. Brought in all the views, of course he did. And it's only been up from there. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Yimfa. I'm loving the addition to the team. And Mouse, and Ex Mouse sorry, the main team now, look like they're ready to cut, go and keep competing for these big events, despite being a team of kids. Yeah, I want to shout out what Shiri has managed to do with Torsi as well. Um, Torsi just really kind of, not in this semi-final particularly, perhaps. In but, general, yeah. yeah. Uh, in general, Torsi is really stepping up based on like compared to where he was in the uh, uh under dexter and maybe it's just dexter doesn't know how to work in op who knows uh but torchy is um on the whole he's really stepping up and i think a lot of that it would be she is doing which is great to see um I, uh, frozen as well frozen i think it, he's sort of showing up right now but i think he's been doing this sort of stuff under the radar for years at this point but he was always sort of overshadowed by Rops as the big prodigy I think Frozen is an even bigger potential prodigy than than Rops and uh, it'll be really interesting to see if Mouse can stay at the championship level which might keep him at the team or if he will eventually or soon maybe even uh, move over somewhere else maybe move to phase for example replace twists um, I could see it but yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just constantly putting up these numbers that he's doing in this semi-final. Uh, this entire event so far, I think it's been very good for him. Uh, the, the entire season for him, the entire year, all of it. It's been, it's a, just it's been a very good great. year, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think Frozen's been overshadowed by two things. Firstly, it was Rops, who I personally still think is will always be the better. I'm just, just big fan of Rops. But more importantly, he then got overshadowed by Mouse being shit. Uh, yeah, it's hard to pay attention to a player giving you like the 1.17s, the 1.16s consistently, finding his numbers. If the team isn't winning a whole bunch and we're expecting more, and there's all this controversy about who should be playing better, Torji underperforming, Dexter not being a great IGL, all this sort of chatter, this distraction. Mm. Really glad to see him getting his flowers now. Because he has, yeah, you said it, he's been doing this for a long time. This year's been one of his best. Awesome to see him playing a grand final. It's looking, it's 8-4 at the half of map 3 in favor of Ents. I'm gonna... It's hard to say that Ents are now gonna go win this, considering they blew a similar lead on the ancient map. <laughs> but uh, I want to say Ents are gonna go to the final. Who do you pick in that matchup? Do you like Mouse on this current form, or do you think Snappy's got the edge on this Shuhei roster? 
I like Mouse, but I might also be biased. I just really like Mouse. Um, oh, it's difficult. It's difficult. I think Mouse would probably take this. I think Ents have shown some weakness. Um, they lost to Astralis. They lost a map to NIP, which is, you know, NIP who were using a stand-in. Like, legitimately, great performance by the stand-in. Uh, they were using a stand-in. And so are Ents. Like, we cannot discount that Ents are using Obviously. a stand-in who is playing his first tier 1 LAN. I guess, wait, did, didn't Vladen play, play that one RMR with the iNation? Yeah, I don't uh, <laughs> really count that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, why would you? Uh, but, you know, on a technicality, this is his second tier 1 LAN. <laughs> um, no, nah, but he's in his first first tier 1 LAN. Uh, he's done alright, but, you know, he is still, comf- like, by some margin, the worst player on the team. He The team hasn't looked great. In like friends, um, they've lost some games. They've lost some maps. They're ca- to me, they're kind of scraping through to this final. Uh, yes. So I think we are. It's going to be Mouse who win. Uh, yeah, the best. I think I the will, biggest I, advantage. I hope so, and say, I think so. Even if it ends up being a phase in the final, I think the biggest advantage Mouse has is firstly they played the early semi final, so they get to watch and prep and chill before playing the grand final a little more. Also, yep. they're the only team left contending for this grand final for this win who is their that, this is their roster FaZe have got the question marks about Twist leaving how's the team going to look after that they've also been just up and down kind of sketchy all year and they're struggling to make it past an Ents who are potentially losing two players from this current roster having a stand in that third player who's potentially going to leave their heads are probably not going to be entirely in it sure they're going to say in interviews oh we're here for the win we care about winning but at the same time these sorts of things just they serve to nagle away at you, just keep you semi-unfocused, semi-thinking, oh, well, if we lose, it's not that bad. It doesn't pump you yeah. up in the same way it should. So I do think Maus should be betting favorites. I want Ents to go and win the event because I'm a huge fan of that team. But I think you're right in saying that this should be their event to win. And hey, yeah, good for them. Really enjoying the way they're, they're playing, loving the players. Yeah, you are you're actually right in that. They're, in this team, there were only three out of eight teams who were actually using a confirmed lineup, and two of them were Chinese. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird, Even Wings it? Up were using their old lineup because Kriyas and Blogis, for whatever reason, couldn't attend this event. Um, sucks for I'm, I'm going to be honest, Kriyas and Blogis do not fucking move the needle for me. I, I don't get the signings at all. <laughs> don't get uh, the I'm curious to see what happens. I mean, I can't really say that they are worse than who they replace uh, in Child King and Merrick. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to say that they're, those two guys are better players, but we've seen this sort of mess happen before. We're like, oh, we got the three Asian fraggers, and they're just going to smash two Europeans in there to try and just magically yeah. make some structure happen. Like, what is this? I was make sense. really surprised. I was really surprised to see Wings Up and who were the others? Uh, Rare Atom as well. Build yeah. this kind of European Asian mix after seeing what happened with Tai Lu when they did the exact same thing earlier this year and folded right. that project for after like a month. And who remembers the, uh, uh, the uh, disaster attempt of Tigers or whatever it was? Yeah, it, and in fairness, that never happened. And never that was happened, because of, but they tried. Uh, yeah, in fairness, that was with pandemic reasons. And let's be honest, if you saw Snappy and Smuya on Tiger, you, you, know, you would expect some things. That would have been crazy. Some memes, a lot of memes. <laughs> <laughs> Smuya with chopsticks. Yeah. <laughs> no, le- legitimately though, legitimately, that team would bang, and you you would want to see it. Like knowing what you know now about Mongolian CS, you would want to see that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm not saying otherwise. I'm just saying every time this experiment's been run, it's either not made it to the start line or not even come close to the finish line. So, yeah, th- this, this is gonna, it's a disaster uh, waiting to happen. I was particularly surprised with it happening after the Tai Lu thing happened. Because then I was like, oh, okay, this didn't work. Why on earth would anyone else try it? And then everyone was like, this is working great. We're going to do this. And, <laughs> this is the future. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about Fuzi and Kriya's being there. Uh, I would have rather seen them in Europe. But it's cool if they can like move over, do some stuff, rack up some, obviously, rack up some big-ass numbers um, in a bit of an they underdeveloped won't. scene. They won't. Uh, I, I, I have Fuzi zero might. faith in them. Fuzi, Fuzi might. Maybe not Kriya's. He's not really in a position to do so. But Fuzi might. He's on an op. Like, what, 
what else is going to happen? He's going to get one tap. Um, He's going to get wrecked by a bunch of 60 year old <laughs> Mongolians, like over and over again. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, either way, either way, uh, it's it's definitely a weird, weird development. Uh, but I like it. I like Very it. Strange. It's it's cool to see some new stuff. It's cool to see some new stuff. Maybe I don't know. Either it will solidify the purely Chinese speaking teams. I, I obviously my big issue that or what I think is going to be the big issue is language. Um, I think Comes even having terrible. yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean the level of English with some of these players is not great. We know that. We've seen interviews. We've heard people talk. I know Ben Tet spoke about the huge language issues they had on Tai Lu when him and x were there. And they were like, they were speaking, they were speaking Chinese, Indonesian, and English at the same time in the same game. Um, which, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a pleasant so, mix, is it? Yeah, so either, I, I mean, maybe it works out. I, I'm assuming, like, you want, you want to, you would think that Whoever is managing or Rare Atom, they are managed by uh, the Finnish guys now. Um, whatever his name is, the guy who cheated, uh, Twista, Twista, and the other Finnish person. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you. Uh, I would assume, I would assume that they had actually thought of this and looked. All right, summer somebody an ex pro. We want to make sure they speak good enough English where they can communicate with Corey and Fusi. Uh, and I actually know that they are they're living together in the same house. All five of them, five of them. It's like a gamer house. Uh, with Corey and Fuzi, so maybe they can build some chemistry. Maybe it'll, it'll work, but language is the big issue for me. Like they are, if the level of English doesn't work out, then it just will not work no. at all. No, the, I think the the point of failure for this team singularly is going to be that language issue. And mm. honestly, I have zero hopes for it. But look, CS Angels Championships will be off watching the grand final. I assume uh, by the time this video comes out. Which hopefully is just Sunday afternoon, so we can get the week nicely wrapped up with a bow tie. Uh, seeing how this goes, how this feels, we might end up doing it on a weekly basis, I'm kind of hoping. Get that uh, upload rate up. So let's be honest, we, uh, I'm in desperate need of it. Uh, <laughs> those Prospects episodes take way too long to, to put out, so hopefully we can get some good just conversational content out there in the meantime. Yeah. yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks to Quacker for being here to bounce ideas off, and honestly provide some interesting insight. It's always great to talk to you. Yeah. See you in the next one. The same. Thank you. Goodbye.